bow your heads with me. Dear God, we come to you now at the point in time when we just ask that you just speak to us directly, the message you have prepared for us this morning, allow us to hear it, and then allow us to go out and live it as you live through us and people experience you in the first person. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So we've been walking through about entering the next chapter of your life. I know some of you are, are already into it and something has come on, a page has turned and you got a new set of cards to play with and sometimes the hand's good, sometimes the hand's bad. So you have to kind of roll with what life deals you sometimes. And um, we have talked about what it means to what it means to do it, how to build onto that, how to, how to start into that. And then this morning I want to talk to you about the place where you kind of get where you're in the, you're in the next chapter and there's, you know, you get start maybe to get fatigued or, you know, you start to drop back into old habits or into old ways. And this is a set of scriptures, this is a, a remarkable set of scriptures here. Um, for, for several reasons. There's a lot of teaching here. Um, anytime Jesus is involved, you just we, we simply just scratch the surface because he is perfect and, and there's just so much there that sometimes our, our mortal minds can't, just can't get it all in. And, and, but this morning I want you to think about where you are. Are you entering into a phase? Do you have an opportunity to move into a new phase? Are you already into the phase, or are you where, you, where we're talking about this morning, where you're kind of in the, in the fatigue and the mundane, and, and it's kind of getting routine, and you need maybe a little spark and, and a little bit of a nudge to, to maybe move in a more progressive and, and better way. Okay, so I'm out of Mark this morning, Mark 8, and uh, this is uh, right after Jesus feeds the 5,000. Okay, that's important to remember here, but Jesus is just fed to 5,000, and there is a, you know, just a miraculous sign, and then it says, then the Pharisees came out and began to dispute with him, so they're coming out to argue with Jesus, seeking from him a sign from heaven, from heaven, testing him, okay, but I like, I like the next words, but he sighed deeply, okay, and, and that, that means that it wasn't just a, huh, this, this, is, this is very deep uh, feeling of, you know, these guys are, are not getting it. I mean, just a, just like one of these. And sometimes you have, I mean, we've all been there, right? We've all taken that deep breath. And that's, that's what he's doing. And it says he sighed deeply in his spirit. And he said, why does this generation seek a sign? Surely I say to you, no sign shall be given to this generation. And so here, here's kind of the, the takeaway this morning is um, so, many, so many times we, whether we think we're doing it or not, or whether we do it on purpose, but in our daily living, because our faith is so brittle, it's so weak, a lot of times we end up testing God for our benefit. And we put, we put God on the spot like, hey, you know, you got you to gotta show me something. You know, I'm not just going to step out in faith is basically what we're saying. And, you know, we end up testing God, whether we know it or not, whether we we think we're doing that or not, but we end up testing God. And in all actuality, we want Jesus to come to us on our terms. And we want Christianity sometimes to, to morph. And in all actuality, it, our Christianity has pretty much morphed into your own, you know, your own beliefs and your own justifications. Because, you know, you have to, you have to kind of, do that in order to, to live, right? I mean, you have to kind of make some things happen, so bend it a little bit so it'll go here and there. We were talking about it in Sunday school this morning. We call it, I call it the golden corral gospel. 
and you go and just, I don't, I want some of this, I like that, I don't like that, you know, don't put that on there, and then you drench it. My salads are more like soup. You just drench it in, you know, justification. And then you get what you want, right? You hand-picked it out, it's just, it's exactly what you want, and that's sometimes what we do. And we are called to be people of faith. I mean, James talks about how people were capable of doing great things, and it's not because they saw the evidence. It was because they were capable of stepping out in faith. Now, did some of them have breakdowns and letdowns? Absolutely, because they were human. But they still walked a life of faith. So as you're sitting here this morning, ask yourself, are you capable of taking the steps of faith that Christ is calling you to take? Or are you saying, hey, I need a sign. And I always say this. You guys probably get tired of this. But, you know, you'd say, if that's what I'm supposed to do, make lightning strike right there. And if he made lightning strike, we'd say, can you do it one more time just to be sure? You know, because we need, we need that. And the stepping in faith is just a monumental part of Christianity. And we've kind of removed that a little bit because we want, you know, we get stuff instantaneously on our phone and we want proof. We want evidence. Show me the evidence. Show me the sign. And then, and if, whether you know it or not, sometimes you're testing God and you're asking him, I need you to prove to me, you know, that, that you'll take care of me. And that's just a horrendous thing to say. And then he goes and he left them, okay? He's not going to argue with them, not going to get into it. And they got into the boat to depart to the other side, all right? So this is Jesus and his followers, his disciples. And it says, now the disciples had forgotten to get bread. And they did not have more than one loaf on the boat with them. All right? So they're there, and they realize no one brought the bread. Who was supposed to, you were supposed to get the bread? I never, I never forget one time, um, me and my uncles and Papa and I think Ryan, my brother-in-law, was there. And we went hunting. And we were all getting out, getting our guns ready and loading them. And we were getting the dogs and all that, tying boots up. And Papa says, he turns and says, where's my gun? <laughs> and like, well, I don't know. Where'd you put it? And he goes, you didn't get it for me? <laughs> He thought, you should have gotten my gun. So, but sometimes that's what happens, is you just don't take care of business. And, and they ended up on the boat, and nobody got the bread. They only had one loaf there. All right. And so when Jesus comes onto the boat, he says, you know, hey, beware of the leaven that the Pharisees have in the leaven of Herod. Okay, And he reasoned with them. So when he says this, there's a couple of things that you really need to, to be aware of, okay? Because sometimes what we say is, you know, a little bit of that can make the whole thing, can affect the whole thing. So if you get just a little bit of doubt, if you get a little bit of, you know, I'm, I'm going to make Jesus come to me on my terms. If you get just a little bit of testing God, if you just get a little bit of that, it can kind of take over the whole loaf, all right? But here's, here's kind of more of a, a, an honest teaching of what's going on here, because back in this day, they didn't use the entire loaf, if my understanding of history is right. They kept a little bit of the old loaf and put it with the new loaf so that you would always have that. And, and, and you would take the piece of the old loaf, and it was like you just kept the thing, the train rolling, okay? And... So what's happening here and what the teaching here is that sometimes we have a little bit, if not a whole lot, of our old selves still in us, okay? And the old selves can pop up. And when you get into healthy habits and you start to change things in your life, all right, a one bad day, one bad morning can turn into a, bad, a whole bad day, can bad night can turn into a couple of bad days. And next thing you know, 
all the progress that you've made, all the improvements that you've been able to make in your life, now you've, you look more like, if not worse, than the person you were before you started to make the changes, all right? And what Paul talks about is that this battle going on here about, I didn't know what sin was until they explained it to me, and then that's all I wanted to do. And I am, you know, saved, but I'm still covered in this flesh. And so the battle every day is that our natural urges are to do things wrong, but we are to be, you know, filled with the Holy Spirit and be driven by the Holy Spirit. And so we are made new each and every day. That's why we say we celebrate Easter every day is because we are created new each and every day. And it's what, but what can happen is you have a little piece of the old left in you. And so that ends up taking over and affecting the whole batch. And this is what Jesus is telling them. But here is the kind of the overall um, point here is that they are missing the point completely. You know, they're talking more about necessities. Now, now listen to me here, okay? They're talking more about me. And I'll get whatever. But men, anybody ever here get hangry? Your blood sugar starts to drop a little bit, and then you turn into a different person. Sometimes I'll turn to Ariane and say, you got about 40 minutes to get me somewhere. I'm going to turn into a different person because I'm starting to get really, really hungry. All right. And, but, you know, if you, get, if you keep somebody's belly full, man, you, you keep them happy. And these guys are more thinking about their bellies than they are about their soul. Now, that seems really, really simple, but let me say that in the world that we live in, in all actuality, we're more concerned about our bellies than we are about our souls. <laughs> okay? And it breaks down pretty simply like that, but that, that's the truth. You know, we're, that's, we're more worried about, you know, feeding our appetites than we are about our soul and the soul of the people next to us and around us, okay? And so they're, they're on a whole different plane. And Jesus is trying to give them some life lessons here and trying to help them grow spiritually. But at the end of the day, they're kind of consumed with, oh, we didn't bring enough bread. We're going to get hungry. And what are we going to do when we're hungry? And think about that statement, okay? Because here's where it gets just kind of off the rails is you have 12 guys, okay? 12 guys that just come off the land. And what just happened? In the scriptures before that, he fed 5,000. And he turned that boy's little bitty lunch, and then they had baskets filled up and left over. Imagine what they just saw. And then you have these guys begging, saying, you better show us a sign, give us a sign, or you're, you know, you're not the true one. And then now they get on the boat, and they're worried about getting hungry. And like, oh, we only have one loaf. What are we going to do? They got Jesus there who, you know, the, the miracle maker, he's there. And Jesus gets frustrated with him. And he says to him, why do you reason because you have no bread? Did you not yet perceive or understand? Are your hearts still hardened? Okay, now, a lot of times in the Bible when they say are, the heart is hardened, that means that it's not saved. It's not capable of, of love. Okay, but as Christians, what can happen is our hearts can get hardened too, to where we no longer hear or respond to the calling of the Holy Spirit. And that is a very dangerous place to be. Because if you get into a place to where your prayer life ceases, you're not reading the Bible, you're not spending time, you know, one on one with Christ, that will have a detrimental effect in your relationship with Jesus Christ. And so if you're trying to get through the day, you're trying to do it on your own, on your own will, on your own strength, and on your own understanding. And that is exactly what they're talking about, where now you resemble you before you were saved. And that's a dangerous place to be. Okay? And that makes it hard to live. And that's why sometimes we get into this situation to where we repeat Anybody ever repeated the same old mistake over and over again? I mean, it's, it's, I mean, that's the story of the Israelites, though, right? It just kept happening. And so this is what he's saying, you know. He says, are your hearts still hardened? Are you not 
understanding what we're saying? Do you know? And, and here, is, here is the question that we need to ask ourselves, okay? It says, having eyes, do you not see? Having ears, do you not hear? And so here is the thing is that we are so blessed that evidence of Jesus Christ, his mercy and his majesty, his omnipotence, it's all around us, it's surrounding us, it's affecting us each and every moment, and yet sometimes we fail to see that he's blessing us. And we just start rolling through ungrateful, selfish, and angry about what's going on. Can you imagine people in the United States of America, the richest country in the world, who have, don't miss a meal, probably overeat, have everything they want, you know, TV, comfort, transportation, health insurance, you know, pensions, retirement, all that money in their pocket, and they're still angry about something. And we need to stop, and I'm, I'm talking to Aaron P. here too, okay? And we need to stop and say, I'm so blessed. I am so blessed. And when you do that, you take the focus off of you, and now you turn it into going out and serving people. Because it's like, I'm so blessed, I need to go out and help people. I need to spread this love. But we get so consumed with us. We get so consumed with our appetites, worried about our bellies instead of our souls. And sometimes we are sitting there thinking, how are we going to do this? How could we ever do this? How could we ever accomplish this? And Jesus Christ is in the boat with us. And he can do anything and everything. And we're looking around like, what? Who? How can we solve it? We only got one piece of bread. You know? Our, our, and it sounds, it sounds like, God, these disciples are so dumb. And you know what? We resemble them each and every day. And you know what the disciples would do if they were reading what we were doing today? Gosh, those people out there at Star Church, they're so dumb. I mean, we just do the same thing that they do, right? And just different times. And what we end up doing is just looking past Jesus Christ. And he's there in the boat with us. Okay? So if you're at a point in your life when you're in the middle of this phase, in this chapter, you can get to a situation to where you're not looking towards Jesus Christ anymore. You're looking and worrying about self, about just surviving. And I'm telling you that life should not just be a survival. Life should be a living ministry to Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay? And that's just not for us pastors and preachers. All right? You all have your ministry. And you need to accept it and serve it in the way that Christ is calling you to do it, okay? Because life, life is not worth living if you're not living the calling that Christ put into your heart. Amen. And it says, when I, weren't you there when I broke the five loaves for, for the 5,000? How many baskets full of fragments did you take up? They said to him, can't, can't you just hear their, like, 12? <laughs> <laughs> Can't you hear it? And also, when I broke the seven for the 4,000, how many large baskets full of fragments did you take up? Seven. <laughs> it's like, how do you not understand? And you know why he doesn't understand? Consumed with self. Consumed with self. Okay? And that's where we are. We're living in a selfish world with a bunch of selfish people in we are ourselves are selfish. And then this gets tagged onto it. Then he came to Bethesda, and they brought a blind man to him, okay? And they begged him to touch him. So this is, this is a strange miracle here, all right? Because Jesus was known to heal people, and the understanding of the people, they, his family, friends bring this blind man here and they say all he needs to do is touch him and he'll heal him because they've seen that before. Okay? And Jesus did it without even touching people. He healed people without even being near them. And so they bring him here and, and let me just say that Jesus heals completely. Okay? And it says that 
They took the blind man. So he, Jesus, takes the blind man. He led him out of town. And it says that he spit on his hands. And then he went up and he rubbed it on his eyes. Okay? And then he asked him, after he did that, can you see? And when he opens his eyes, he says, I can see objects. You know, it says, I, I can see it's either a man or a tree. I can't tell the difference. All right? And then it says that he touched him, and put his hands on him, his eyes again, and he made him look up, and he was restored, and he saw everything completely clearly. Okay? And then he sent him away to his house, saying, neither go into the town nor tell anyone in the town. So what is the teaching here? Why is this added on here? And why are we talking about this this morning? Number one, Jesus didn't fail the first time, okay? He heals completely. Number two, it's on his time, okay? It's like the song Mike sings, Four Days Late. When we think he's four days late, he's right on time. And when we talk about going to Jesus in prayer, we have to offer ourselves to him. And then we say, it's your will. Okay? And you handle it the way you're supposed to handle it. And guide and direct me to stay in your will. And we've talked about, you know, sometimes there's that time when you know what God's will is, you know what your will is, and it's okay to, to disagree, to have your will. What's not okay is to do your will when you know that God's will is not that. But there is, there is health in getting yourself from your will over to accepting his will. That, that's a healthy process, okay? That's the filling of the Holy Spirit, emptying of yourself. And so sometimes, sometimes God heals Gradually. Sometimes God brings blessings to us gradually. And what we have to do, stay faithful. Remain faithful. And it's tough. I'll just be honest with you. Sometimes it's tough when we have to stay faithful and we have to remain in step in his will. And especially when we think he's not not rolling as fast or as quickly as we want him to. But here is a bunch of guys who are in the middle of this chapter of their lives and they're missing the point. And the point that they're wanting to concentrate on is them. So let me tell you that in this chapter that you're in, you know, I don't even know what chapter you're in, but what but regardless, the chapter is about Jesus Christ. That's the main character in every one of our chapters. And if it's not, then we're not doing it right. And sometimes he brings things to us gradually. But we have to be people of faith. And we cannot test God. We cannot demand of him anything. And we cannot demand, show me a sign or else I'm not going to do it. We can't approach him that way. We come to Jesus Christ and say, you're the miracle maker. You'll take care of me. Your promise is that you will always be there. You'll never forsake me. Can't be separated from your love. You have what's best for me. And why would, why would we worry about bread, running out of bread, when we got Jesus Christ who just turned it in into enough to feed 5,000 plus 12 baskets full. So I'm going to ask you to stand this morning. These are some, these are some tough verses, especially when we put ourselves into the story because it kind of brings out who we are naturally, because once you read this story and we start to, to peel it back a little bit, we find ourselves in this story, because we have been there if we're not 
there today that we just want God to just fix it for us and fix it for us now. And that's not the way that it works. And we don't like to step out in faith. We like it to be obvious, 100% faith, guarantee, warranty. You get something from Prime and it doesn't work, what are you going to do? Send it right back, right? <laughs> we can't do this, all right? So I'm, I'm telling you that we have to be people of faith. And the way that you become people of faith is you have a great relationship with Jesus Christ. You know and understand his love for you. And in the end, the guy was restored. He was made whole. And that is the story of Jesus Christ, is he makes each and every one of us whole. He gives us salvation. He gives us atonement. He makes us whole. Thank you for tuning in to Star Church's sermon. We truly hope that the sermon edified you today and brought you closer to the Lord. For more information about Star Church, visit our website at stargbchurch.com. Once again, that's stargbchurch.com. If you would like to visit our church, our address is 4925 State Road 142, El Dorado, Illinois 62930. We now pray that God will bless you as you enter the mission field and bring his word to the world. And as always, we will see you next time here at Star Church. Thank you.